we're back we're back uh, at this point I just have to clean all 10 of the threads uh, where the bolts go for the head bolts I figured uh, a q-tip cotton swab uh, would be the best option my best friend in this case so I'm gonna go ahead and try it real quick so you see how that still has like look at that that's bad so first it's gonna get all the oil out and then after I should be getting the cooler now. I can just grab a little piece of the rag and just stick it down there. I just hope that it doesn't stay down there. Well, good thing that came up. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to me that uh, the coolant seems to like decompose a little Q-tip, but the oil was absorbing it pretty well. And it's already like pulling it away. So my air compressor here, before I wrap up uh, the threaded bolts here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just spray it down with a little bit of compressed air. Just try to get a little bit more of the gunk out, any debris, and I think we should be solid. Oh wait, let me get my safety glasses, hold on. All right, we're good, safety glasses on, pressure's good. Perfect. Three out of ten. Four out of ten. It's good. Five, six, seven for seven, eight for eight, nine for nine, and ten for ten. The next step to do is to get all that oil and coolant that's around the sleeve, all around the cylinder walls, all that around. We need to flush that out. I kid you not, this thing looks like tight tea. Look. Look at that kind of see a little bit there <laughs> there you go look, look, look. tight tea tight tea anyways i didn't drain the oil out of the engine so a bunch spilled in uh it's almost inevitable even if you were to drain the oil you're still going to get some within the head that you know just lies around in the head so when you take off the head and you tilt it some of it drops in so it's almost inevitable in order to flush this out you can do it two ways without the head or um with the head on might as well it's already without the head so i'm gonna do it here now um so if we take a look here just a little port there you see how kind of uh the liquid kind of bends in yeah there's a port in there and if you guess it right that port leads into this metal uh coolant line here and then the thermostat's there so basically coolant just chills around this whole sleeve around this whole part and into the line once the engine reaches operating temperature thermostat opens coolant flows down the radiator hose into the radiator gets cooled etc etc and then it comes back up from the top radiator hose into uh there's a little coolant port on i think on the edge of the head and that's how it flows back in and it just chills around the whole sleeve like i said into the coolant line and then that's uh when it keeps flowing uh it's when uh, the engine hits uh operating temp and then it opens so it's just a whole cycle i can wash this off flush it out i'll show you guys right now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use di water but I need that open and obviously uh, the conventional way to open that uh, it's when the engine is running but obviously I don't have the engine running on I can't turn it on so I'm gonna have to unbolt that two three bolts I believe that's what it has and then take out the thermostat that we just flushes out downwards uh, and might as well I'm gonna go ahead and swap uh, the thermostat so unlike the oil which has which it actually has an oil pan uh, the coolant doesn't have other than the lower radiator hose uh, you really can't get the lower coolant out there is a bolt, uh, it's a coolant drain plug, I believe what it's called, uh, it stores the back. It's a 
Some Z-Series, I think, have it in the front. Some have it in the rear. This one's in the rear, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see it anywhere here in the front. But we're gonna do it if that's for measures way. And that's gonna be to pour in uh, water. Uh, and like I said, flush it out. You could use a garden hose. Don't recommend using tap water or garden hose water. Uh, has a bunch of minerals, uh, has a bunch of, it's, it's chlorinated, so it's not gonna be that good for your engine. If you're wondering why my engine overheated, it's because my dumbass was trying to go to a family gathering and I was in a rush uh, and I forgot what I was doing. I think I was changing the top radiator hose. It, it's had like some metal mesh on it. Didn't buy it, didn't like it. So I bought an OEM one. OEM wasn't fitting, hell of a day. Anyways, uh, I lost coolant obviously. So I poured coolant in uh, and you're supposed to bleed it correctly. Now, when I was pouring it in, I didn't wait for the car to hit operating temp, so you guessed it. I didn't miss, I mean, I I didn't pour enough. I probably poured maybe a little less than half. So what had happened was when I was pouring the coolant in, I must imagine that coolant only made its way around the sleeve, right? It was So all this was filled, all this was filled up until here. So I poured enough and I was like, all right, we're good, we're solid. I only bled like maybe like two, three bubbles out. I was like, all right, we're good. Closed the cab, uh, closed the hood, went driving, bam, bam, bam. As soon as the car hit operating temp, uh, I started to see the needle climb, right? And I was like, oh shit. So at that point, I already knew what happened. I was low on coolant. So what was happening here was that as soon as it hit operating temp, coolant rushed and all this started flowing out. And by the time, I must imagine that maybe half of the radiator got full and this barely had any uh, coolant. So, you know, we have an engine going through high RPMs, you know, moving, getting hot. Of course this thing overheated. So this thing got cooked and bam, and now we're here. So that's what happens. So make sure when you're adding coolant and bleeding coolant, make sure you wait until you hit operating temp and you do it right. If not, you're gonna be like a dumbass like me. And this is where I'm at right now. Let me be a lesson to you. I went ahead and disconnected it. Just a little hose clamp here. Also the sensor here. And check this out, check this out. Oh, hmm, it's pretty good. So that tells me that uh, in this little line here, I, I covered the, the block real quick. In this line here, the coolant is still as green as it should be. Um, but obviously around the sleeve, we have some oil. So yeah, it's, it's just three bolts, one, two three those three and then this whole thing comes out and i should be able to take out the uh thermometer the thermostat and then we'll start uh flushing this thing away the coolant drain pan is down there the harness is cleared here and the three bolts are out one two three I really thought a whole mess was gonna come out. Okay, well, it's here. Yeah, you see, look at that. So this, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about um, when the thermostat opens at operating temp. So there's a few dripping from there, a few drops. Oh, shit. Ah, come on, I already cleaned this. Ah. Those are Ah. Hold up. Anyways, <clears throat> back to my point. So coolant was on this side, right? So um, the rest of the coolant that might be in the line, it didn't pass through because, you know, the thermostat hasn't opened. So once this thing opens, the rest of it comes falling in through here. So in here was only the bit that wasn't drained out when I took out uh, the lower radiator hose. So the coolant should be coming in from that side, the right port, the right one, which if you follow it, it's all this in here. I don't have a funnel small enough to fit in between the sleeve and the wall, so we're gonna improvise. So it's gonna be a little funnel. Right, so you're gonna wanna get distilled water. Like I said, I don't recommend using tap water or garden hose water, same thing. Excuse me, they have more, um, they have more minerals and they're chlorinated, so it's not gonna be the best to use honestly you don't want to rust the inside of the block so you can see that the oil is being lifted up 
Look at that milkshake. Horrible. And it should start flowing in that way and then come out this way. You should really get a funnel. You're gonna fly by this procedure much faster. I'm just trying to buy time right now. Look at that, it's rushing. So honestly, honestly, my recommendation is to do this with the head already torqued down, bolted on, all that good stuff. That way when you pour the water right through that little port uh, that's attached to the head, it's gonna flow a lot faster. I mean here, I'm being very careful. I'm not trying to get water down the rings. Um, I already put this paper here. I have to clean it out after. So, you know, I'm working with what I got right now. I'm being uh, a little bit of ingenuity, bringing a little ingenuity to the table. Initially, I was pouring on this little, uh, on this little end right here um but you do have the oil galley here so i would try to stay away from that i'm doing this one i've been doing it in this one here so i'm observing something i'll tell you guys right now just let me finish pouring the rest of this gallon bottle here and if you're careful enough you should be able to get right on the money finish pouring the rest of it and you guys should be seeing it coming from there and then one final view So far, I know it looks dark, it's not oil. I mean, you guys have been seeing, it's been pushing just clear water. Uh, so, so far, if I can't feel my finger there, but I'm gonna fit a little paper towel and it should be clear, but you still see little remnants of oil along the side. So at this point, the oil is sitting on top of the coolant. So it's not a lot. I mean, all this was filled around, not heavy, just on the top layer. But if you look at this side, there's almost none. There's a little bit right there, a bit right there, almost none there, we're good. Here, we're starting to see a little bit more. There, 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 there. yeah, there's a ton there, there's a ton there. Uh, so yeah, so we've been able to get at least this bottom half clear, other half not really. So I'm not sure if I should just keep pouring here or try pouring maybe here uh, but the oil galleys are there. I don't like that. I can try here and try to push all that oil out. I see it two ways. If you do it without the head, it's better to see the progress of how much oil you have left. So it's pretty cool. The con is that it's gonna take forever since you have to be very careful without trying to pour water down in the pistons, down the walls. So you should be very careful with that. Uh, if you have the head on, I feel like uh, it's gonna go a lot faster because all you gotta do is just pop this thing open and then you just pour, you know, your gallon down in there and it's gonna do the same setup, right? The same thing. Um, it might be a little tougher to get into the, to get to the thermostat. So just be mindful of that. You guys see that? Looks a little shiny. I don't know if you guys can tell, uh, but it's oil. Your eyes pick it up better. I'm not sure you can see it on camera, but it looks a little, looks like green or purple you know what i'm talking about if you guys have seen oil like on the on asphalt you know what i'm talking about even if there's a top layer of uh of oil on top of the cooling here i still don't think it poses a great threat to the life of your engine worst thing is that you flush it again once everything is on do maybe about two cooling flushes obviously with everything connected right and I think you should be good because I'm pretty sure some of this coolant and everything is gonna flow throughout the system. 
so you might be able to throw some of the you might be able to catch some of the oil that made its way out of here and all spills into the combustion chamber. on that side this is using your resources that you have available to you if you want to be more efficient i would recommend a shot vacuum hopefully it's powerful enough to suck out all the oil from from the top of the deck if you can do that if you can achieve that you're solid i see no problem so but i don't have a shot vacuum with me right now i'm probably gonna get one next week when this thing's running already so it's almost too late um so yeah, shot back. Use your brain, carnal. Use your brain. Chances are you use the Q-tip. Time to use it for something different. So where you see the oil, like I said, this side is pretty clear. But here, <clears throat> okay, you see that little piece there? Originally, I was just trying to, um, I was just trying to uh, absorb it with the Q-tip, right? I would do this, absorb it, right? And look, bam. You're getting some, right? Also, be careful. Like I said before, when I was cleaning the actual thread bolts, which I have to do again, uh, make sure it doesn't get too wet. So anyways, originally, I was doing that. But why don't we use our brain? Instead of doing that and absorbing it, still do the same thing. But rather, these little oil chunks, they're like in chunks. Instead, why don't you just push them and gather them as close as possible. Look, like I already moved all these here. Grab them as close as possible or push them as close as possible to the port. Look at that. And then, see this side is pretty clear already. So just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And push all these little oil remnants all the way down there. Pinche genio. Like I said, I'm just using what I have, I'm trying to be uh, creative here, I'm trying to use what I have. Should have really gotten a shot back in there when I saw it. Oh, then nah, I don't need it. I'm gonna pour the last gallon of distilled water. And I'm gonna put the camera there so we can see. Hopefully, we catch more of this crap coming out. Our right, last one. Let's see what this does. After this, we will officially have washed out the cooling system. Trying to find every possible way to get the oil out of the surface. This is another method that I'm using. You gotta use the more rigid uh, shop towels. So just go ahead and insert it and then just go ahead and slide it. Since the oil is, is resting on the top part, You'll see some of the oil come off of, off of it. So you see there, it's pretty clear already. It's a pretty good method. Let's say you can do it right here too. Just 
just to kind of like feed it in. And then through this little corner here, you go ahead and wedge it in. And then you just drag it. Just be careful though, because the deck of the block is pretty sharp. I already caught myself here. And the reason behind using the more rigid ones is because the other ones I'm pretty sure they'll uh, they'll just rip in there. Or even better, <clears throat> just grab the the towel, get a screwdriver, and just kind of like fold it and pinch it in there. That's so. Look at that. Again, I'm not collecting pockets and gallons of oil. I mean, this is honestly all the oil that's on top of the surface of the coolant, but it's just bothering me. So I'm just trying to make the best out of this job that I possibly can with the tools that I have and the resources that I can make. So I'm trying to be as efficient, effective, effective the most. Efficient, not so much right now, but effective, I believe, I'm close to nailing it, close. I can try something else. I'm trying to keep coming up with new ideas. I think if you run the screwdriver very carefully, don't gouge, don't scratch, don't force it. Along the sleeve, we should be picking up some oil. Carefully placing that in. Just very carefully, very, don't do anything stupid, don't, don't, don't force it. There you go. It's like one of those little toys, you know, that you, you see kids play. Huh. That might be due to the polarity that I believe oil uh, has to metal. We're running it one more time at your own discretion. Warning, do not try this at home. This is for science purpose only. It's working. Okay. If you guys just focus on that part right there, I should be able to get that whole little, uh, that whole little rim of oil out, check it out. Screwdriver is clean. Let's get that little piece again and that right there. Voila. A little flashlight here so I can show you guys how it looks around. All right. It's somewhat crystal clear. Wrapping around cylinder number three, looks good. A little bit of oil there. Looks good here. A little rim there, look at that. That little piece. A little rim there. Looks good here, just that little piece there. A little more there, a little bit there, a little bit there. I mean, and then we have uh, on both sides there. All right, looks so overall, it's good. I mean, that's, we're talking about minimal, you know, uh, pieces of oil or remnants of oil. Um, I'm gonna pass the screwdriver one more time, do a little rag method, whatever, one more time. We should be good. If there's any oil in the system, I'll probably flush it, I don't know, next month or so, whatever, whatever. And oil, the oil that's there, once I put the coolant stuff, it should have made it to weigh somewhere within the system. And once I change the coolant, 
I should be able to get it out. But honestly, it's a little bit. But if we're honest with ourselves, I would say it's better to have oil in your cooling system. Obviously, it's bad to have either oil in your cooling system or cooling in your oil. But I think it's worse to have cooling in your oil system. Um, so in this case, we have oil in our cooling system. I don't think it's as bad. I don't think it's as bad. It's not going to affect that much. Um, the cooling properties, et cetera, et cetera. It's not going to, shouldn't clog a thermostat or any of that stuff. As you guys saw, I showed you guys, it's just remnants that we have. I don't think it has to be crystal clear, crystal clean, crystal clear, crystal clean. Uh, obviously if this was hot tank, total different story, drain plug, all that good stuff would have been out. So we're working right now with what we got, with what we can do, you know, trying to be efficient and effective as much as possible. So other than that, I think we're solid. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, I'm pretty happy. All right, so wrapping this up, if you have coolant in your oil system, I think that's horrendous. Uh, that does affect the oil properties. The oil is supposed to be, it acts as a film between two metals. So if you have coolant mix in there, it's gonna disrupt those properties and you essentially have water in between two metals. And as temperatures rise, water is gonna evaporate and you're gonna have two metals kiss and it's not gonna be pretty. So the, I'll leave that for tomorrow because tomorrow we're gonna drop the oil pan. I'm pretty sure some cooling down there, not a lot, hopefully. So we'll drop the oil pan. I have a new oil pan gasket that I got from AutoZone. It, sh it should suffice. We'll clean it out and then we'll be good. Cooling has been flushed. We'll flush the oil tomorrow and then we'll also mount the head. We'll put the new gasket on here, thread the bolts with the oil, torque it down. We're good. We'll continue tomorrow. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.